Hello and welcome. My name is Angie Holden and I'm the blogger behind The Country Chic Cottage. Today we're going to talk about sublimating on rugs, doormats, whatever you want to call them. We are going to sublimate on them. So I'm going to do this a few different ways. The first is with actual sublimation doormats. So they sell sublimation doormats on Amazon. White, cushy doormat. The top is made with polyester. You can, however, look for just regular polyester rugs at places like Lowe's, Home Depot, Amazon, the Dollar Tree. Just make sure that they say 100% polyester on them and that they're light enough for sublimation. So I'm going to do a gray one in this video and then I'm going to compare it the same print on this white one so you can see the differences in the color as well. So now what supplies are you going to need? You will need your rugs, whatever kind of rug you're going to use. And it needs to be polyester or needs to be a sublimation blank, which will be polyester. You're going to need your lint roller. You're going to need sublimation prints. Now you will need sublimation prints that are sublimation ink on sublimation paper printed out of a sublimation printer. And I'm going to show you a few different ways to do these. So a small print in the center and kind of stacking your prints to cover the entire rug. So a few different techniques on how to do that. Now for all of my rugs, I used an eight and a half by 14 inch sublimation paper, which goes fine in either my converted Epson EcoTank printer or my Epson F170. So if you have access to that larger paper, it might help you get a little bit larger designs when you are making your sublimation rugs. Then you're gonna need some heat tape, some butcher paper, and some kind of heat source. So I do recommend a rather large heat source for these. I am gonna use my auto press because it's the largest heat source I have. I would use the largest thing you have available to you. And I try to keep my design all in one press. Now, some of these I tiled. So I did a design here, a design here, a design here, a design here, and sort of tiled those and pressed four different times. But each area only got pressed once. So I used designs that were white on the background so I didn't have any overlap. So that is an easier way to make super large designs with your sublimation printer without all the ghosting that you might get with overlapping the designs or pressing more than once in one area. So just sort of a trick to get these large projects out of your sublimation printer, even if it only prints eight and a half by 11 or eight and a half by 14 size prints maximum. So how do you make those tiled prints? Well, I had a video, I think last week, where I talked about different free software for you to print for sublimation. I used one of those to print for this project. I use Silhouette Studio to do all of my printing and divide up my images into pieces to sublimate. So if you have not seen that video, I will leave that in the description below. Should explain everything you need about printing your images any size and you can use that same software to crop and make tiled prints like this one if you have one full design. So hopefully that helps you understand how to print with your sublimation printer as well. So now I have my stack of sublimation prints. I'm ready to head to my heat press and start pressing. So let's take our sublimation rugs and take a look at how to make them. We're gonna start with a white rug that we're gonna do one design in the center. I printed this design as large as possible on my eight and a half by 14 inch sheet of paper. Now to do the rug, you will wanna preheat them. This removes any moisture from the rug itself and make sure that you get a good print. So go ahead and pre-press. Now these white rugs, I did 385 degrees for 55 seconds. That's a little bit lower than it shows on the Amazon listing, but I did have better luck out of those settings. Once you're done with that pre-press, be sure to lint roll it well. And then after you lint roll, take your hand and make sure that the pile of the rug all lays in the same direction. Although the pile on these white rugs is not very deep, I still want it to lay all in the same direction so I get the best sublimation print possible. Then we'll locate our sublimation print, make sure that it's straight, and tape it down. Now I used as little tape as possible on these in order to not leave any heat press marks and I kept my tape to the very edges. Also the tape can really get stuck on these rugs and be hard to pull off so I do recommend using as little as possible and just kind of barely taping it down just so it does not move. Then be sure to add that butcher paper over the top. I did in fact add butcher paper to my heat press under the rug as well just in case I had any sublimation print hanging off, which I will on some rugs that I make later. So then we're just gonna heat press that 385 for 55 seconds. So the pre-press I only did for like 10 seconds, but this final press I'm gonna do 385 for the full 55 seconds. And the auto press is automatic pressure, but I do think these are like a light to medium pressure is fine on these rugs. So if you have another heat press, light to medium pressure will be fine. 
Once that's done, I like to just peek up on the corner of these because I did not know if they were gonna sublimate well. Peeked up on the corner, made sure it sublimated well, then removed that sublimation print and the tape. Again, the tape can be very hard to remove and I couldn't always get it with my heat resistant glove on, but I was able to get all the tape off just by removing my glove and just kind of using the edge of my fingernail to pull that tape up. Once all the tape's removed, if you do have any heat press marks on your mat, you can usually just kind of rub those away with your hand. So it's basically like the pile laying down and once you fluff it back up, it was absolutely fine. So I didn't have problems with heat press marks on any of these once I used my hand to fluff the pile back up. So this one turned out great. So it's a one single design in the middle of my rug. Now what happens if the rug is not white? Let's take a look at this gray rug. The gray rug is just a polyester rug. So it did not say it was for sublimation. I got it, actually got it off Amazon, but again, you can look for a polyester rug anywhere. Just make sure it's at least 65% polyester. I would recommend as high a polyester content as possible since you will be using this as a rug and you will be walking on it, that type of thing. So I repeated the same process. So a pre-press, then lint roll. The pile on this one is definitely way thicker. So again, I used my hand after my lint roll to make sure it was all laying in one direction then put my sublimation print down and taped it into place. Then again, put your paper over the top and press. I did this one for 385 for 50 seconds because I wasn't sure if it was gonna melt or not because it was not intended for sublimation. However, it did work great. So again, once the press is done, I go ahead and lift up the corner and make sure it's sublimated well. If it didn't at this point, I could lay that sublimation print right back down and press it a little bit more, but it looks great so I went ahead and removed it. So now you can see that the white rug Really bright, really vibrant. You can really see the yellow sunflower. The gray rug, however, the print is way less noticeable. So it will, the darker the background color, the less noticeable your print is gonna be. And you can see that yellow sunflower, you can barely see it on that dark gray rug. So be aware of that when you're picking a color for your sublimation rug. You might not want white rugs because who wants a white rug? <laughs> however, a really light gray rug, might work better than a darker gray like this one. So I just wanted to run that experiment so you could see when you're picking your sublimation rug, what color you should pick. So now we're gonna look at tiling our designs. So using that smaller printer, but doing sort of all over pattern on your rug. Now these procedures would apply any rug that you purchase. So say you find some light gray rugs somewhere, you can use my tiling methods to cover the entire thing or most of it, the same as I did with these white rugs. So let's head to the heat press and I'm gonna do a couple of different designs, tiling it all over so you can see just how to do that. So this first version I'm gonna do kind of half and half. So I went ahead and preheated half of the rug in my Cricut Auto Press. Again, I'm doing these 385, 55 seconds. After I preheated it, I lint rolled it and then after the lint roll, I used my hand to lay the pile all in the same direction. Then I just started like cutting away the excess of my sublimation prints and laying them out. So you don't want the sublimation prints stacked on top of one another in any areas where there is sublimation ink. So cutting those down allowed me to see that a little bit better. And I just added those into place where I thought they would look good on the rug. Then again, tape them down as little as possible. And if you can tape off the edge of the rug, that's even better. So some of these I taped to that protective paper that's already in the auto press. So those, there's no chance they'll leave a heat press mark. So I did that on several of the pieces of tape if I could. Otherwise, I just lightly stuck some tape around the pieces and then added some butcher paper to the top and then pressed half of the rug. So the auto press is big enough where I could press half of the rug at a time. Now I am gonna do another rug here in a minute while I'll press four different pieces of this rug and that would work in a smaller press. So this time I pressed the 385 for the full 55 seconds. Again, the pre-press was 10 to 15 seconds and the full press is 55 seconds. Then I removed my butcher paper and my sublimation print to reveal some really cool greenery on this rug. So now it's time to do the other half. So this design is not gonna meet in the center. So I am gonna have a little bit of room between the two leaves. So that gives me a little bit of space to play with. So I know that my design will not fade by pressing it twice. So I just repeated the same process on the other half of the rug. The pre-press, then the lint roll, laying the pile down all in one direction with my hand. Then again, I added two of these really large leaves to the other side. Again, for this one, I used an eight and a half by 14 printer, so the leaves are really large. You could definitely use an eight and a half by 11 printer, make some smaller leaves and just add more of those to the rug instead of just two, maybe four or something like that. Just cut around your sublimation print, lay those into place, tape them down, add a butcher paper over the top, and then press. So again, 385 degrees, 55 seconds on this side, 
Then remove the butcher paper, remove the sublimation print, and we have a gorgeous looking rug with four huge palm leaves on them. This one is absolutely perfect for a bathroom. I really, really love this design. This next rug I'm gonna press in four pieces. So I have four different sublimation prints with my design. So I'm gonna press the top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right. So that's the way I chose to do it, but you could do these in any order. For each of the areas, you're gonna to wanna to do the same procedures we've done in the past. So you'll pre-press each area, then lint roll, lay the pile down with your hand all in one direction, then place your sublimation print, tape it into place, add butcher paper over the top, and press the 385 degrees for 55 seconds. So the first press, you don't have to be too careful about your location, but you do wanna make sure it's in the press completely. Then after that first press, when you put the rug into the press, you will want to make sure that the location of your design is on the bottom of the press itself. However, all the other designs that you've already sublimated on the rug are hanging off the side. And the design I wanna press now is in the heat press and fully on the bottom plate. You do wanna make sure it's fully on the bottom plate and none of it's hanging off so you don't get any ghosting. Then you go ahead and add butcher paper to the top and press 385 degrees, 55 seconds. Then we'll do the bottom. So it says plant mom across the bottom. So I'm gonna do plant and mom separately so I can use those smaller sublimation prints and a smaller heat press actually to do this. So the first word I'm gonna do is plant and I'm gonna repeat the same procedure I just did for the top right section of my mat. Now you may wanna hold the rug when the auto press or your heat press when you lift it up because I did not and the rug fell completely out. Just removed the sublimation print from the surface and it sublimated great. Then we just locate our last sublimation print. So bottom right is the word mom. I just located that on my rug and repeated the same procedures. So after I've located the mom in place, I just tape it down. Then again, located in my press so that nothing else is in the press except for the word mom and close it. Then I just remove the sublimation print and my rug is complete. So four different sublimation prints went into this rug, but it looks amazing. So I am super impressed with the way this one turned out. I wasn't sure tiling so many pieces, but it looks great. So think about the design of your rugs. Like what is the design gonna be? And can you divide it up into pieces like I have showed in this video? If you can, it's completely okay to use a smaller sublimation printer and a smaller heat press to make a really big project like these rugs. Now the right rugs are maybe as large as I would get. If you did an even larger rug, I'm not sure if you could tile like in the center. Um, you might be able to plan it out with your heat press and get it to work, but it might take some trial and error. So think about your design. Think about how you would tile it when it comes to your sublimation print. Divide the sublimation print up as you're printing it on your printer and then tile it in your heat press so that you get full coverage on your rug without having to have a super large sublimation printer. So this is just one way to do that. I do recommend a white background for your sublimation prints using this method. I haven't really perfected the method of tiling when there's a colored background. If you want a colored background, I would recommend finding a polyester rug that is the background color that you want and then sublimating on top of that. I think that will work the best, but again, as I showed in the beginning of this video, be careful about the rug color you choose because the darker the rug color, the more your colors will be off from what you originally intended. So I hope this video helps you learn a little bit about sublimation on rugs and bath mats, that type of thing, and how to make really large projects with any sublimation printer or any heat press. The same method can be applied to several different sublimation blanks. So if you had like a really large towel, you could use this method. A really large pillow, again, you could use this method. So don't think that you're restricted to really small sublimation blanks if you have a smaller printer that only prints eight and a half by 11 or eight and a half by 14 size paper. You can definitely use this method to get even larger with the sublimation projects. So I'm gonna link to the rugs that I used in the description below. If you are on computer, click show more. If you're on mobile, swipe up on the video or click the arrow to expand the description. From there, you can click on the blanks and the supplies that I used and purchase those if you would like. Otherwise, grab your rugs and get to sublimating on them. I really think that this version with the palm leaves is my favorite, but the plant mom might come a close second. So I hope you enjoyed this. Tell me your favorite rug in the comment section below or ask any questions you have about sublimating on rugs in the comment section. If you liked this video, if it helped you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, head on over to our YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. 
We have videos just like this one every single week, and trust me, you don't want to miss any of those. So thank you all so much for joining me, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.